On today's episode of What's Going On With Shipping, the Federal Maritime Commission debates on whether to issue an emergency order for U.S. ports. I'm your host, Sal Mercaglano. Welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. If you're new to the channel, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Well, the Federal Maritime Commission, which is the federal entity that is empowered to regulate international shipping, has received new powers under the Ocean Shipping Reform Act of 2022. And one of those powers is to issue an emergency order regarding U.S. ports and congestion. And they have just released, the Federal Maritime Commission has released, a request for comments on whether or not they should use this new power. Let's talk about what that new power entails and what it will take for the FMC to issue this emergency decree. Okay, you may be asking, after the past year, 2021, where we had massive backlogs in U.S. ports, why didn't the FMC issue an emergency decree back then? Well, they couldn't. Not till the passage of the Ocean Shipping Reform Act, Public Law 117-146, the Federal Maritime Commission did not have this power. And what they're asking for is public comment on on whether or not the conditions exist that warrant the issuance of a emergency order. And what this emergency order would do is it wouldn't clear the ports of all the containers. It would not magically, with a snap of a finger, solve all the problems. But it would require the common carriers and the marine ocean terminals to basically share information with shippers, truckers, and railroads. Now, let me begin by a very simple statement right off the bat. Why the hell does that not happen now? Why are we not sharing information now? I think this is pretty self-explanatory that the sharing of information regarding the shipment of goods should be readily available. But one of the things we do find out is in the shipment of containers into U.S. ports via the large ocean carriers that this is all proprietary. And so a lot of information is not being shared. And you may be sitting there going, well, wait a minute, why do I need to know about somebody else's shipping container? Well, this helps you plan and adjust for where your containers are going to come in, how many containers are coming in, and where congestion is hitting the system. Well, now the five commissioners of the FMC cannot just do this. As a matter of fact, the chairman of the commission, uh, Daniel Maffey, can't do it himself. He needs the concurrence of all five. It's got to be unanimous of all five. But even then, he has to do this after issuing a, uh, a, a period of seeking statements or, or getting comments. And he has to ask three specific questions. The first is, has the congestion created an emergency situation of a magnitude such that there exists a substantial adverse effect on the competitiveness and the reliability of the international ocean transportation Supply system. Well, let me be clear, that's existed for over a year right now. The system is jammed up. It is just clogged up with goods, not just LA and Long Beach, but we're seeing it on the East and Gulf Coast now. So first they have to answer that question. Second, would an emergency order issued by the commissioners alleviate the emergency situation? Okay, the situation exists, but would the emergency order do anything? In other words, if they start releasing this data, how does it help the situation. And then finally, what would be the appropriate scope of an emergency order issued by the commission? Now, they can't issue this for a long period of time. Matter of fact, it will only remain in effect for 60 days, at which point they would have to kind of reset this. And oh, by the way, this power goes away 18 months after June 16th of 2022, when OSRA, the Ocean Shipping Reform Act, was passed. So Here's what I think is going to happen here. The Federal Maritime Commission is opening this up because this is a tool in their toolbox that they never had before. They're going to implement an emergency order on U.S. ports. And I think it, it's largely because of this. They want to promote this data sharing. And they have very little mechanisms in force to make ocean carriers, the marine uh, terminal operators, the common carriers, to release their data. This is one way that they can get them to release their data. And once they release the data for the emergency decree, they can keep funneling that data out afterwards. So 
if you are interested in this and you want to comment on this, you can. Interested parties have up to 30 days for when the request for public comment and the request for public comment went out yesterday, August 11th, uh, in the Federal Register. And you can link over to it. And I'll have it in the show notes so you can link over to it. And you can determine whether or not the Federal Maritime Commission should issue this emergency order for U.S. ports. So this is all part of a movement by the Federal Maritime Commission to broaden the scope of their powers. And we've seen this been going on now since the passage of OSTRA. Remember, the, the Shipping Act of 1984 and the Ocean Shipping Reform Act of 1998 really limited the power of the Federal Maritime Commission. But now you see that there's been a request for public comment on a plan to require basically uh, import and export information by uh, 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 vessel ocean carriers out there. They've initiated the development of a notice of proposed rulemaking on, on uh, detention and demerge rates. Uh, there's an interim process for submitting change complaints. They have basically prioritized uh, enforcement activity through the establishment of a Bureau of uh, Enforcement Investigations and Compliance. Uh, we're seeing that uh, the provisions of OSRA that was self-executing have put into place. They've published uh, Fact Finding 29. The FMC is being much more proactive than they have ever in the past. Plus, they're asking for more money, more people, and they're working in conjunction with the Department of Justice in the investigation of the shipping alliances. I think this is a very important moment. Uh, there was a, a, a great question that was asked by uh, Tim Dooner over on Freight Waves on What the Truck and what was the biggest thing that happened so far this year in freight? And I said the passage of OSRA, the Ocean Shipping Reform Act. And he asked me, well, okay, why is it important? I think this is it right here. I think if the Federal Maritime Commission can get this emergency order for U.S. ports issued, that's going to give them more power to collect data and oversight and that has the potential to put more government oversight of shipping. Now, I am not saying that's a good thing by any means. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm very leery about this because I don't know how much the Federal Maritime Commission knows what to do with this newfound power uh, because you have to be very careful about using too much power once it's given to you. I think the big thing for that I wanna see the Federal Maritime Commission do is data collection and data release. That's the big thing I, I want because so much of this is buried behind barriers of proprietary information and the individual ocean carriers. Back in the day, go back, you know, when the FMC was doing what it originally tasked to do, it was releasing all this data. There were troves of data you can get into. Now, not so much. So this emergency order for US ports can have a big change and substantial impact in what we're seeing in the movement of freight and more importantly, the visibility of the movement of freight in and out of US ports. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, share it across social media. And if you can, support the page. The way this page operates is basically through the generosity of those who watch it, subscribe to it, give it a thumbs up, but also contribute directly to the page and you can contribute in two ways. One, you can hit that super thanks button below and contribute directly to the page, or you can go over to Patreon, become a patron of the page and help support the page and allow it to grow and expand even further. Uh, just published a What the Ship, our weekly news show. That comes out once a week. Episode 45 is out surmising the top five stories. And then we do features like this two, three times a week on individual stories that impact global shipping. Until our next episode, this is Sal signing off.